Hey there, it's Orfe Diwungi, the co-host of the Everyday Economics Podcast. Exciting news! Check out my new weekly column at thecentersquare.com. Join me as I break down complex economic trends in a way that's easy to understand for everyone. Check out the column every week and stay informed about the economic forces shaping our world. Be sure to subscribe to the Everyday Economics Podcast and visit thecentersquare.com today. Welcome to California in Focus. I'm David Mastio. Today we're talking about the future of Prop 47. Joining me today is the Center Square's Kenneth Shrupp, California reporter. Kenneth, there's a lot going on with how to reform Proposition 47. Why don't you start with the latest and then we'll go back into the history. Sure. Uh, just first of all, Prop 47 is this initiative passed in 2014 in voters that really loosened prosecution for most drug and theft-related crimes. And many people blame it for the increases in homelessness and theft that are plaguing the state. So California Governor Gavin Newsom introduced this ballot measure to reform Prop 47 in competition with another measure that has been put forward by a coalition of law enforcement and major corporations. Newsom's measure was introduced on July 1st and is supposed to be voted on on July 3rd. His website, his Twitter, all mention of this has just been scrubbed off the internet. Now, the actual link, if you did have it saved previously, you can still get to it and pull up the announcement about his ballot measure. Uh, so that record is still there. But it seems that he was not able to get enough votes from Democrats to be able to get his ballot measure on the ballot because they, even with suspending the rules to allow for this to get on the ballot with just a majority of legislators voting for it, it seems like he didn't have the votes. Normally, it would have required two thirds. He called technically what's a special election so that uh, only a majority of legislators would need to vote for it. Again, it doesn't seem like he was able to get the votes for that even. But this is his really his second defeat from Democratic legislators on his battle against uh, this other Prop 47 reform initiative. Just earlier this week and last week, he was trying to force Democratic legislators to add what are called poison pills or inoperability clauses to their package of anti-crime bills that they've been working on with Republicans. These are bipartisan measures supported pretty much by most members of both bodies of the state legislature. And Newsom wanted these bills have language added that would prevent them from taking effect if the business and law enforcement Prop 47 reform initiative passed. Democrats said no, and they did not stand by him, and they did not add these amendments that he was trying to force through. And the crazy thing, though, is, I think, is that Newsom tried to create this ballot measure right at the last moment, right? This is right after the business and law enforcement backed measure had already qualified for the ballot and the deadline for them to withdraw had passed. So introducing this measure would sort of, I mean, this is, this is what the proponents of the measure told me. It was, it would just confuse voters. You know, you see two acts on here. Voters aren't going to know which one to vote for. Additionally, having the poison pills was supposed to be able to exist so that the Secretary of State could go ahead and in the ballot description write, oh, the business and law enforcement ballot measure would invalidate a number of anti-crime bills, and you don't want to vote for that. Another interesting element of the governor's proposed initiative would be that even if both initiatives passed, if the governor's initiative got more votes it would automatically unpass the business and law enforcement ballot measure. So in this whole saga, what we've seen is Newsom get really shot down by Democrats, not once, but twice. And so today, what what is Newsom doing? Well, Newsom has left the state. It seems that he's going to a meeting of Democratic governors with Joe Biden. You know, he's been floated as a potential replacement for Biden if uh, Biden decides to step down or if people decide he needs to be replaced. And uh, he also announced that he is starting a new podcast and radio show for distribution on iHeartRadio, the nation's largest radio platform, with a few celebrities called Politicking, where they're going to talk about politics and sports. Going back to Proposition 47 for a second, the governor's initiative that failed 
was really reform light compared to the business and law enforcement version of Prop 47 reform. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Let me just run through and do a bit of a brief comparison for you. The business and law enforcement group would allow for felony charges for serial thieves, uh, enhance organized retail theft penalties, warn dealers of hard drugs. They can be charged with homicide if a user dies, create new penalties for fentanyl dealers on the same level as like other hard drugs, and it would create a new crime called a treatment-mandated felony. It'd be a new crime class, and people who are charged and convicted under this, if they successfully complete drug and mental health treatment, they'll have their conviction expunged and face no jail time, and they'll also get shelter, job training, and other services because it's designed to really target homelessness because, admittedly, there are a lot of homeless people in the state who are they're stealing because they have like mental health problems and addiction issues and they they just need to get help and treatment. So instead of just allowing this person to just go in and out of supportive services but not really be forced to stay in treatment, this will be like, look, this person shouldn't really be going to jail or prison for this. What they need is help. Uh, and that's why this is called the Homelessness, Drug Addiction, and Theft Reduction Act. It's backed by Walmart, Target, and uh, Home Depot, and the State Association of District Attorneys. The governor's bill, though, is designed and sold as something that wouldn't increase the prison population. So if you're not going incre- to really increase the prison population, what does that mean? You're not really going to be prosecuting as many people. So it would th- his measure would require prosecutors to have to prove that individuals charged with selling fentanyl waste drugs, no fentanyl is present in the drug, that the buyer did not know that there is fentanyl in the drug, and that they did not tell the buyer that there is fentanyl in the drug if they want somebody to get convicted for mixing in fentanyl with their drugs for overdoses, because that, that is a serious problem. Uh, the governor's measure would also pass something called Alexandra's Law, which is a version of a bipartisan bill named after a 20-year-old fentanyl overdose victim that Democrats have shot down twice. Um, it even says Alexandra's Law in the, the governor's formerly proposed ballot measure. The family of Alexandra was not reached out to and uh, was very unhappy with the use of their daughter's name without their permission. Um, and uh, serial thieves could face felony charges, but if they have two prior theft convictions uh, within three years. But again, people feel that it it just really was not going to be enough. And a lot of people, especially Democrats in the Assembly and Senate, said they're going to stand by the business and law enforcement led Prop 47 reform and they just don't want to support this. Kenneth, thanks for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. Hey there, it's Orfe Diwingi, the co-host of the Everyday Economics Podcast. Exciting news! Check out my new weekly column at thecentersquare.com. Join me as I break down complex economic trends in a way that's easy to understand for everyone. Check out the column every week and stay informed about the economic forces shaping our world. Be sure to subscribe to the Everyday Economics Podcast and visit thecentersquare.com today.